So one of the questions we get asked um, a hell of a lot is basically how do we come up with the levels on our chart? So if you watch our Forex focuses, um, if you've emailed us and we've emailed across charts, if you read our, if you read our emails um, that we send out with our analysis um, of various different trades, you'll always see that there are some horizontal lines of support and resistance on there and ultimately levels that we wish to trade from. Um, and then we always get follow up questions when people see these things saying, you know, basically, how do you come up with them? Are they Fibonacci? Um, do you use trend lines? All of this kind of good stuff. So we thought that what I'll do in this video right here is really sort of just give you um, give you sort of like a, a short lesson on how you go about identifying these levels um, and also talk a little bit about how you would how you trade those levels. OK, so what we're going to do, we're going to pick up a couple of random charts. We will go over to trading view here, put the symbol in. Oops put it in alphabetical order and literally just pull up a chart, identify some levels and then move on from there. So we will start with, this is the Aussie CAD. Now what I tend to do is I always start with the longest term time frame. So I start off with the weekly chart and then I'll drill down to the daily chart. And if I'm going to be day trading, then I might drill down to like the four hour and the one hour chart as well to identify these levels. But the key is, is that you don't want to be getting, you don't want to take um, identify levels that are kind of, you know, tiny levels that don't really mean anything. What you're looking for when you're trading these levels is you want to be getting into trades at levels where there's been a reaction because it's kind of there's a higher probability there's going to be another reaction at that level. So from that perspective, we only identify, you know, the, the extreme, so to speak, so where you can see a big reaction to a level. So for example, this here, um, I would consider a level looking from a weekly chart perspective. And it's not to say that when you get down to the daily charts, you know, you don't see that, you know, there there is another sort of like significant level that you wouldn't see on the weekly chart. But what we try not to do on each chart that we're marking up is sort of identify the tiny reactions to tiny levels that really don't mean anything. And what I mean by that are things like, you know, this, this level here, there's not really, there wasn't any momentum into the level. So the fact that it's come away from it is kind of neither here nor there. I'm much more interested in this level above there. That there is interesting for me. If we come down to the bottom here, that we've got the market come down and touch this area twice. So that's interesting. Um, this one down here is interesting. If we get in a level. You know, but the other part, so where is retail traders will kind of mark up this little level here and this little level there and so on and so forth. That's kind of not what we want to do, because what happens when you do that is you end up with levels all over your chart and the price can't literally can't go anywhere. You know, everywhere it goes, it goes into a level. So once we've done that on the daily chart, we'll then move into the on the weekly chart, sorry, the longer term time frame. We'll then move into the daily chart and look at what immediate levels are sort of trading around where we are. And I say the immediate levels because what you don't want to do is you don't want to get into the habit where you're taking trades or where you've identified levels that you know you you look at every single level on the chart. And basically, you know, then you never look at your chart again. And what happens is the chart becomes a bit stale. So by looking at only the immediate levels around the price action, it forces you to have to look at your charts, you know, more or less every day, you know, or at least every week to mark up the new levels to see where you are in comparison to where prices. So if we look at that, we're at around the 98 level. So I'm not going to start marking up levels all the way up here at 107 because we're not there yet. And my chart's just going to look untidy. What I want to do is I want to mark up the levels that are, you know, price is immediately going to go into. So for example, one 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 zero one 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 that we just marked up there, the price potentially could go there. Then on the downside, we've got this area here. Again, price could potentially trade to this level. And then anything below this level or anything above this sort of grid that we're in here, it really isn't interesting to me. You know, and the reason, as I said, is that it's, the price isn't going to go there now. And if it's not going to go there now, then I don't really need to know about it this second. It's something that can become, you know, more interesting at a later date as price approaches that level so that my, my chart doesn't then start to get stale. And then that's kind of 
all you need to do. You're just picking out the most obvious levels. You're looking for reactions to a level. That's very, very important. So you want to see that the price moves away from the level. It's not enough that it just comes up to the level and moves sideways. It has to move away from the level. Um, and then what you've got, once you've done that, if we go to the front of this chart, is you've got a whole load of areas where you can look to trade. So now your job as a trader is just to wait for the price to approach that level and nothing more. If the price isn't near that level, you don't take the trade. It's really as simple as that. And once we've done that, we can then move on to, let's move on to another pair. Um, so we've then got the Aussie franc. Let's go into this chart here again. We're going to, on the weekly chart, we'll identify all of the levels that we can see because they will be far apart. We're looking for reactions to levels, remember? So we want to see some the price has moved away from this level, which is nice to see. Price moved away from that level there. And we're only looking for the obvious ones. If you have to squint to pick out a level, it's probably not there. Okay, and that's very, very important. We're only looking for the most obvious levels. So we've got this one here. And then we've got this one down here. As you can see, and then we finally got one down at the bottom. We're not interested in a bunch of the other levels. These are the ones that are going to make a difference to us from a weekly perspective. Then we can, once we've come out of this, we then draw drill down to the daily, to the daily charts, and we can see what sort of within our immediate vicinity. So what are we going to be trading into in the next couple of days, couple of weeks, etc. Um, and there we can see that we've got these highs here which have proved to be significant highs every time the markets come up there it's reacted to it now the fact that we've got this high over here then we've got a bunch of highs sort of clustered over here um, what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut through this candle all right that's not a problem for me cutting through these candles because you know the real high is sort of this one here then when price approaches a level then you can decide what you're going to do with it all right and um, we've got the real low over here um, and then you kind of you just move on and move on and you pick out all of the levels and once you've got the levels marked up as I just said it's then your job to sit literally just sit here and wait for the price to approach the level once the price approaches the level then you can decide what you're going to do with it are you going to take a bounce from the level you know or are you going to take a breakout from the level and you know if you're if you're determined to then trade within these levels. So if you don't want to wait for the market to to get to these levels, then what you have to do is you you kind of have to decide on which direction is the momentum going and then trade accordingly. So if, for example, I wanted to trade here with the Aussie franc and I, and, you know, and I needed to pick a direction, um, I would say, well, the market has bounced off of these highs a number of times, come away from it a number of times. The momentum is to the downside. So therefore, I'm going to go and look for an opportunity on a shorter term time frame to take um, to take a short. I won't be looking for a long because the momentum, going back to the daily chart just very quickly, the momentum on this chart is to the downside. So if someone held a gun to my head and said, you have to take a trade from here, I'm going to be looking for a trade down towards these this support area here. And then perhaps I'll look for trading a bounce. But you know, I'm not going to be looking to buy into this momentum here because it looks like the market's going the other way. Um, and that's kind of it. You know, that's it's not more it's not more difficult than that when you're trying to mark up your charts. You're just looking for the obvious levels. You don't want to squint. If you're squinting at a level, if you're turning your monitor on its side to try and figure out whether it's level or level or not, it's not there. You're just looking for something obvious. Once you find what's obvious, you wait for price to come to those levels. When it gets there, you trade it. It's really as simple as that. So we're on our way to um, to go for a run every Monday evening, Tuesday evening, um, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday. I sort of like, I go to this fitness class thing. Um, sometimes they're running, sometimes they're circuit training, stuff like that. Um, I've been doing it since the beginning of the year. I used to just pretty much play football all of the time, get in the gym every so often. Not really as much as, I, well, nowhere near as much as I should um, just because from a discipline 
you know, perspective, I'm pretty shocking when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, but since I started this class at the beginning of the year, things have been going really well. Um, I think I've never been in better shape. I've never been fitter than I am now. Um, so it's really cool. Nice Cheers, dude. So we've now arrived at the seafront. If I take this off, you can see this is where we are going to be running. Well, along down there, around up and down hills, stuff like that. And this is why I love where I live. Obviously, grew up in London, born in London and all of that. I thought that I'd never ever leave the city, but to be, to be completely honest, I, I don't think I could give this up anymore. I love the seaside. I just get this kind of, this sense of freedom that you don't get uh, in London, surrounded by all of the buildings, the city, you know, all of that kind of good stuff. So don't, don't get me wrong, I love it for, you know, for the odd occasion. I like going in there for work and stuff like that. But in terms of living, I love the freedom that living by the sea kind of, that you get, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm taking a video. I've got to give you some money as well from Amy. Right. Can I get it after, please? Why are you filming? So I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel later. Say hello. hello. This is Kat. She's evil. <laughs> no, she's evil when she's in. Um... Yeah, basically. If you see her in like a tank in a wife beater and leggings, run away. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone got keys? Keys, keys, keys. Alex, you ready? Dude. You ready? Oh, that. ready? That's what I'm gonna do on Christmas Day, remember, on those rocks. <laughs> <laughs> go, sprint, jog, sprint, jog. Sorry, ready? jog, sprint, jog, sprint, go. So that was so much hard work, but you feel good as a result, always. You know, I think it's, as I said to you earlier, it's literally one of the best things that, that I've done. I, I actually look forward to this now, almost more than I look forward to playing football, which is saying something, because I do enjoy playing football. But yeah, so now, on to home, have something to eat, check the emails, and get all of this uploaded for you guys.